Welcome back everybody to another camping with Tony and Bruno. No, who is somewhere in the back here? Bruno. Hello. Here he is. Um, we've got a big camp happening now. We're gonna do one night in a spot that I've been to before a few times. And the thing that's different about this one is I've got some new gear <laughs> that is just, it's a bit crazy, but it should be legit. It should work out quite well. It's a huge tent, and I'm gonna put another tent inside it, and I'm cooking on all electric grill and stuff like that. So, <laughs> should be interesting. It's a little bit of rain. I don't know, I think there's quite a lot of rain coming in the middle of the night, but other than that, should be fine. We're in the trees, nice and sheltered. So, bring you back at camp. Okay, we're here at camp. It's just started to rain. Um, I've got an area here that uh, I want to set the huge tent up first. It's a bit rough ground, but it doesn't matter because uh, I've got another tent that's going to go inside it. Uh, first of all, though, we're going to let Bruno out and give him his treat. So let's let Bruno out. Come on then, puppy. There you go. You want your treat? Let's give him a treat. Bruno. You gonna sit? You gonna sit? Good boy. I wonder if he'll sit pretty. We're still teaching him. Not sure. Let's see. Sit. Sit pretty. Sit pretty. Come on. Yeah. Sit pretty. Sit pretty. Go on. You can do it. Come on. Sit pretty. Ah, ah, ah. Come back. Let's try again. He's a puppy. It's, it, it takes time. Sit pretty. Oh, he's got to have a stronger core. Got to train that core. Come on. Oh, <laughs> good boy. Well, he almost got it. Right. So what we've got here is the nature hike. Now look, don't judge me on the names of these things. They're kind of, kind of weird. It's the nature hike cloud desk. It arrived. Early this morning, I had no chance to open it, check it, or anything. From what I can gather, you cannot get these things anywhere except on AliExpress. It looks pretty simple. The instructions are here. You open it up, peg out the four corners, and then stick the poles in, and uh, hope that it stands up. I guess it would be easier with two people, but one person. Let's do it. Okay, so there are a few components to this tent which will come clear once you see it. Uh, a little catalogue. Ah, okay. A screen. I'll explain that later. Okay, we've got guy lines. Yep, loads of guy lines. Pegs. Oh, now let's see what kind of pegs they are. It's a bugbear of mine that Western companies, their tents, have really rubbish pegs. These guys have got, wow, decent pegs. Okay, that makes a change. It looks very sharp. And then poles. Let's see what kind of poles these are. Oh, the spring, spring-loaded poles. And there's another bag of poles. So one set is for the interior to hold the main tent up and one set is for the awning. Okay, this has got to be the interior because it's got a smooth sort of bullet point on the end. So let's get the poles set up first. Oh look, it's got an integrated lantern holder. Interesting. Okay. Right, let me get all the plastic off and I'll bring you back for setting it up. Oh, 
Okay, got the tent. Just gonna lay it out. I watched a really brief video on this. That's it. So I really don't know how this is gonna go. So I want the door, the front of it, I guess facing out that way. So we need to find the front opening. Okay, this is, this is the front door here. Yeah, this is the front door. So I need to turn it this way and then peg it out. Okay, now the way you're meant to do this is straighten it up and then peg it out. So I guess you just peg one end first. Must be. You double check the instructions. Okay, yep. Open it out fully. Find the corners, I'm assuming this is one of them. Shall do it at a bit of an angle. Excuse the arse shot. Okay. Now I think these are glow in the dark pegs. Cool. Now I've got something wrong here. Unless the back is narrower than the front. Oh well, let's just go in and see. Right. Time to do the poles. Okay, so there's a bottom. Each one clips in. There's not really much to it. And then the top. Like so. Huh. So yeah, these lantern holders. I wonder how you lock them into place. Very odd. Unless I'm missing something, they don't lock into place. Right, so that's one. Same again. Now it is cold, this metal is freezing cold. Should have bought gloves. Okay, let's get this opened up and set this up. Okay, so according to the instructions, you open up the side and 
prop it up. So let's do that. There must be a seat in here to put this into. Yeah, there is. So there's a reinforced tab here that this wedges up into. Like so. Wow. Okay. That's a hell of a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Now let's go in and do the other one. I brought you in with me to see. I don't know if you can. <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, let's find it. Here it is, the seat. Okay. And it is, it's, oh, I'm sorry, I've knocked the camera over. <laughs> Hang on, I haven't, I just dropped the umbrella in the way. It is as simple as that. That was a classic. Now, we've got quite a droop on, she said. Uh, so I'm assuming you've got to guy it out because it's drooping in the middle. Hello, Bruno. Come in to investigate. Yeah, so I'm assuming you have to now guy this out to straighten it up. All right, so let's do the guys. Ah. Now there's some bigger hooks here. Right, so, it doesn't say it, but there are four shepherd's hook ones. They're the ones that are meant to go in the corners, not those uh, other plastic ones. So let me swap these over and I'll bring you back. Right, I've swapped the pegs around. Let's get the guy line in. It comes with pretty good guy lines. Oh no. He's seen someone. Good boy. Alright, let's do the other side. So this should now straighten up. I think you've just got to tighten it at each end. All right, then we need to adjust my pegs on the corner because it's all a bit of a mess. I didn't line it up straight. Uh, let's start with that one on that corner. Snagging here. All right, I think we're almost there. Okay, I'll bring you back when I peg the whole thing out because I've got to put a peg in every single one of these things. So I'll bring you back when I've done it all. Okay? All right, it's all guide, pegged. I haven't got all the major guys on because it's not going to be windy enough. Let's have a look inside the palace.
and I'll explain what this does. Oh yeah, all right. Oh, I see, so there are tie-up points. Okay. So you would have it to here, and then get the other poles and set those up, and then guy those out. Oh yeah. This is gonna be cool, but you can actually just Oh, you can't. I thought you could take the whole awning out the way and roll it up and tie it up, but you can't. It has to come out on the poles. Let me get the other poles. So I hate having to set up tarps. I really do. So I was looking for a solution where I didn't need to do that. Something that's big enough to cover a tent and be comfortable in. And I found this thing and it doesn't have a floor. So it's no use for a mozzy country or anything like that unless you've got another tent inside. Okay, let's set these poles up. Now something tells me I'm gonna to need to guide these out. Yep, I am. Okay, so you've got to guy the corners out. Okay, that's not a big deal. Comes with guy lines. So there's bungee on the end, so it's elasticated. Much easier to just use that. And I will just double loop it. There you go, that's not going anywhere. Right, so, I think that'll work. And then you do that at a 45 degree angle, and then put the other one up. So now I know why they've got luminescent pegs, because the amount of guys that you're gonna to have to use. Now, the shorter ones and longer ones. Again, she said, so you definitely got to use the long ones at the front because otherwise they won't reach. But I'll put a link to this tent, shelter, whatever you want to call it. But again, I found all this stuff on AliExpress and <laughs> I paid a lot of money to get it all shipped to New Zealand. I'm sure getting it shipped to the States will be a lot cheaper. Same for the UK. Oh, this is looking awesome. Now I've got a feeling if it really chucks down, it's going to pull. But that's okay, because I have another pole that I could stick here if necessary. But look at my shelter! This is huge! And you can pull the backs out with guys to give yourself even more room at the back. Which might be worth doing, so let me do that as well. So plenty of guy lines, 
let's see if I can just get away with doing just this middle one. See, that would be huge, huge difference. So you see what I mean? I could do all three, but I think just that center one will be, be fine. So I've tightened the corners. If I wasn't using the side doors, I would peg the sides down as well. But you never know, I might use them. All right, let's get the other tent up. Okay, so it is, it is raining now, so I need to bring this awning down more. So I think the best bet is to have it so that it will drain off like that. Yeah, so now it should flow to the front. And I'll just do the same for this one. Uh, it's going to pull. It will pull. So, unfortunately, there's no toggle to tie this down with. Maybe what I should do is have one end up really high and the other one low, then it'll all flow that way. Yeah, that works. Now I can see a clear line. It's all gonna drip off the side here. Look at this, seriously. Look at all this room. This is epic, absolutely epic. Amazing, but the best is yet to come. All right, so what I've got here is a, another part of Nature Hike. And it's a two-piece tent, but you don't have to use the bottom bit with the tent if you don't want to. But because I'm on uneven ground, and I don't want the bottom of the tent to get wet, it's perfect. So what we've got here is actually a stretcher bed. Oh yeah. Okay, so let's take all this in there and get it set up. Stretcher, and here's the tent. All right, so this is a double, double size stretcher. Okay, instructions. Uh, you open it up, and then you stick a spreader bar in. Okay. Nature hike stickers, I've no idea why they put those in. Okay, so this is the two person, so double stretcher bed. I'm hoping this is a complete game changer. Ooh, what's in here? Pins, locking pins. All right, so what do you do? Okay, the spreader bars just click in. Now, I don't know anyone who's seen me use the Oz tent uh, stretcher. That's impossible to use. It takes a bodybuilder to do it. Oh, and I've done it wrong already. Got to slide it through. 
Hang on. Oh, that's better. So you might be asking, why am I setting up a tent within a tent? Well, I think it will all become clear once I'm in it, and you'll see the benefit. I'll probably sit on this to save my back some hassle. No, then you can't do it up. Okay, here we go. Oh, that's so much easier. Woo. Getting hot now. This is so much easier to set up than the Oz tent. And that is it. All done? Yeah, all done. Woo. Okay, locking pins. Where do they go? Put the spreader bar in. Locking pins go in once I put the tent on. All right. So let's put the tent on. Now here's the thing. Because I'm under this huge thing, I don't need to put the fly on. I only need to put the inner up. So again, this doesn't seem to have a name, this tent. Uh, it was just pop-up. It's not the canyon. I don't know what it's called. Type A automatic tent. So it is a pop-up tent. And I just could not find this tent anywhere else except on AliExpress. Okay, this is the fly. Now I'm going to try and get away with this without using the fly. And these are the poles for the fly awning. Again, I'm going to try and get away with not using any of that stuff and just set the inner up. Because then that gives you bug protection, that sort of stuff. So this is meant to be a pop-up tent. Okay, and I've already started by doing it upside down. And there's a frame system here, I'm seeing. Oh yeah, I get it, okay. So you extend it out, okay. Oh man, if every tent was this easy, God, that's it. That's it. That's a two-person tent. <laughs> I'm going to have to move the camera out because it's so big. Hang on. Seriously, look at the size of this thing. Okay, where does everything go? Okay, so the locking pins. All right, so this is the bit that stumped me. Where do the locking pins go? Hmm. That's not immediately clear. What you're meant to lock onto here. So let's just see what I can come up with. Must go through there. It does. Oh, that's so easy. That's it. That's the locking pin. All right, same on the back side here. So what there is, is there's a hole, metal hole, you just have to find that and then thread it through to the bottom. Yep. I 
I've probably done this upside down. Just when I said this was easy. Oops. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Oh, and it is locked. Yeah. I guess that does work. Oh, okay, same on the back side here. I'm assuming you ought to do this before you put the fly on if you're using the fly, which most people would. And I've got one more in the corner here to do. That's it. I've got to say, that was a piece of cake. So it's got a lot of features. Look at this. So it's got a double mesh and fully winterized door. Now that's pretty cool. So you can just have it mesh. Oh, I see, yeah. Okay, so like the Hillbergs. <laughs> well, it hasn't collapsed. <laughs> Give it time. After all, this is camping with me. All right, now I notice in that corner, there's actually a power socket uh, cable. Just in that corner. Got plenty of pockets. I don't need to put the mesh, I don't need to set this up at all. I don't need to put the fly on because I'm in my big tent. <laughs> this is amazing. This could be a game changer for me. My only concern is the awning, but I could set up another pole right in the middle to deflect any water off it. That is it. How awesome was that? And I could just move it to wherever I need it. But I think that's actually a pretty good spot right now. You don't really want it touching the outside fabric because it will get wet, potentially. Oops. The only thing I don't like are these pins, these bolts. They're a bit finicky and they're not long enough. But that's a minor gripe really, considering how much tent I've got here. And this thing is massive. Oh, we're going to be so comfortable in here tonight. And yeah, I'm off the floor. Ha <laughs> I didn't even need to bring my chair, but I have. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. Let me bring the rest of my stuff in. I don't know what's happened to Bruno. Bruno! All right, we've got Bruno's dog bed. Just to keep him off the floor when we're sitting in here while he's sitting next to me. Hello. What's this? Is that your bed? Is that your dog bed? Look at that. Not that he's going to sit in it. Got my chair. 
This is that Zempire Stargazer chair. That Zempire kind of gave me and my King Camp table. Get a lot of questions about this, it's a great table. So if you've got one of these chairs, the cover becomes the headrest. Apparently. It's a tight squeeze though. I don't know that I would do that. That's too tight, it needs to make that bigger. All right, chair is set up. Table next. Bruno. <laughs> so Bruno's got a fern stuck to his tail. <laughs> Bruno, come here. Do you want me to get rid of that for you? And it's annoying him. Oh yeah. All right. I've got so much space in here. Okay, I'm gonna get all my bedding out and everything else and I'll bring you back. Right, welcome back everybody. <laughs> oh, Bruno. Right, let's get the lights on. It's getting a bit dark in here. Let's get them all cranking. Let's make it look nice and pretty. All right, got a light in here as well. All right, there you go. And I've got a fantastic light from a subscriber, a fan. This is from a company called Steady in Australia. And it's from a couple of guys in Oz. I think it was Adam and Adam. Look at this thing, it is a work of art, it's beautiful. So it's called Steady, the company, and it's got a lovely ambient glow, or you can turn it on to full bright. So for sitting on the table, it's actually perfect. Look at that, beautiful. Oh, but you know what? Oh, let's get uh, Bruno some water. Actually, it's almost his dinner time as well. I'm a bit more organized this time. I've got proper water bottle here. Squelchy ground. Oh, and I can finally, ah, oh, sit. And I think it's brew time. 
Cheers, everybody. Mm. That was good, Bruno. This Stargazer chair is pretty cool. It's got an insulated beer holder here. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, so Bruno won't stay. I've tried to get him to stay on here, but he won't. This is a palace. This thing is incredible. Now, a friend of mine, uh, Jörg, who is on Go 4x4 channel, he built an actual palace uh, by King Camp, which was massive, massive, and it looked like a real faff to set up. This is a lot easier. The only difference is, I guess, I think his one had a floor, was a proper tent. I wouldn't really call this a tent. I'd call this a shelter. Um, but it is pretty amazing. And, it, you know, look, I've got this tent set up behind me, all ready to go, inside of this tent. Now, if there was a massive storm coming through the night, I would guy this outer one up so much, and then I could put the outer fly on this tent as well, just in case something happened in the middle of the night, there were leaks, something like that because this thing is mesh all at the top. Um, so you would definitely have to have the fly on if it was raining. So this isn't a watertight test of this tent at all. This isn't a, a review to see how, <laughs> it's because I said dinner time. Hold on, let me give him his dinner. I think a couple of them went on the floor there. Okay, where are we gonna feed you? I don't want you in the mud. You can have it just down here. Come on then. Sit. Go on then, good boy. Yeah, so this isn't a, a review of the weatherproofness of this tent behind me, but definitely is of this one up here. Now, uh, contrary to the black fire marks that you see here, this is actually uh, no fire zone because even though it's wet and it's kind of like a rainforest, these, this is an ancient, ancient beech forest and they just can't afford to have uh, wildfire here or anything like that. So I'm not gonna have a fire. I've got no heating with me. It is getting chilly but I've got a massive down coat here to put on if I get cold. Um, but I don't think that's gonna be an issue for a while. And being out of the wind is the crucial thing. And with this, I'm completely out of the wind. It's just superb. Absolutely love it. All right, everybody, I'm gonna sit back, chill, Bring you back for dinner. Ah, welcome back everybody. Right, it's time for dinner. Uh, first things first, we've got to put uh, Bruno's light on. So I've got to find his light. So then you can see him zipping around in the background. Um, but I don't know where it is. Ah, okay, found it. Let's put it on for him. Come on. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. Come on. I can hear him just over here. Bruno. <whistles> Good boy. Come here. What's this? Is it your light? Hang on. Good boy. I know. Very exciting. Oh, you're wet. You're having a good time, aren't you? I don't know where you've been going, but you are having a good time. 
There we go. Right, okay. That's Bruno sorted out. I don't know if you'll see him zipping around at all. Thank you. Are you going on your bed? I doubt it, you're gonna go play. Right, I think it's time for my dinner now. Um, so, let me get my cooker out and bring you back. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, what on earth has he got this time? And this isn't camping and blah, blah, blah. Well, it is camping. <sighs> because I'm outdoors. Camping is whatever you want to make of it. You know, it really doesn't matter. So what this is, is a grill. And I've got this plugged into my EcoFlow battery bank that's in the truck. And what we're going to do, uh, I don't know if you just saw any of that. <laughs> what I'm going to do is cook on my grill here. So I've got a grill plate here and a flat plate on the top. Uh, there's a fat drainer on the bottom. And this thing is a, what, it's a DeLonghi dual gauge thing. Uh, you'll see it when I, when I put the burgers in. First, I've got to get this thing up to temperature. Uh, chop some onions and... Um, Let's get cranking. All right, so first thing we need to do is turn this on. Okay, we need to select. Oh, it's a bit wobbly, this table. Oh, it's because I've got the water on here. We need to select burger mode. Okay, and then I just, we just press play. Nope. No, I don't want 60 degrees. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. I've got to turn them both on. Okay, so time, five minutes. Okay, you press play. That's it, it's doing it. Right, so then you just close this to let it get hot. And then when it's ready, you put your burgers in. Right, but first of all, we need to chop up an onion. Uh, knife. Oops. Now obviously, if you were film, if you weren't filming this for YouTube or anything like that, then you'd use all of this space. You wouldn't care. In fact, you'd have the front zipped up and everything else. I've got it wide open at the moment um, just because uh, you need to film. And also when you're cooking, I think you do want it open. Okay, so someone's nose is gonna go nuts now. So I've got my burgers and I'm doing double cheeseburgers. <laughs> this is the way to do it. All right, slice up my onions. I haven't really thought this through much. Rubbish bag. No, Bruno, definitely no. You've had your dinner. Can you see him? He's a nightmare. He's cheekier than Bruce ever was. Bruno, away. Go on, go away. Cheers, everybody. Right, so, onions, how do we want to do this? Um, I think I just want to make them quite thick. Now it might seem a bit gluttonous doing two double cheeseburgers and that's because it is. So I might put these on now just to get them Oops, sizzling. 
just to do the onions in advance. Look at that. This is brilliant. This is the way to cook. No, Bruno, no, go away. Come on, you're being a pest. Honestly, Kes cannot help himself. Okay, I've got some lovely burgers here. So I've got to time this all correctly. Um, I do, I've got, uh, this is so daft. I've got so much space over there. Honestly, you could fit a whole other tent over there now. It, that's, that's how big the space is. Look, I'll show you, I'll walk around. Look at this. This is the amount of space I've got. It's, it's crazy, I've got tons of space all around here. And I'm cooped up into this corner. But again, that's because I'm filming. That's the only reason. Okay, uh, tongs. Where did I put the tongs? Here we go. All right, we've got some onion action going on here. Oh, that's saying it's at temperature. Um, actually, what I might do is push these all to the back. Burgers go on. This thing is just brilliant. Oh, check it out. I mean, it's flashing at me, seven. So I guess I push the button. Ah, there it goes. I don't know. There's two displays, it's dual heating here. And what have I forgotten? Bruno, no, go away. Honestly, he's creeping up on me here. It's a nightmare, he's had his dinner. But he's such a cheeky puppy. He tries it on all the time, even at home. <laughs> we're, we're quite strict with him because, I don't know, dogs, dogs that beg, dogs that haven't been trained are a real pain to live with. How many slices of cheese? I think I've got to go two each, haven't I? No, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. One each. Oh, steaming in here. But I tell you what, because I've opened the side door, it is all going straight out. I could even open another one as well. Just to, uh, I could open that one to let all the steam out. So let's do that. Okay, so what I'll do is just open this zipper here. Oh, that's better. Roll it out. God, look at all the steam come out. That's crazy. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> I don't know if you can see all the steam coming out here, but it is just, oh my God, that's crazy. Absolutely crazy. I might have to open the other one as well. Let's do that. <laughs> so much steam. Uh. Okay. Thing is, even if it's raining, it doesn't matter because you're still, everything is undercover. Everything is completely covered. Wow, this steam is insane. That is. <laughs> Oh my God, check it out. This is crazy. <laughs> should I have a look to see what's going on in here? I don't know. I guess I should. Let's have a look what's going on in here. And to top it off, 
Oh, wow. Hold on, that's actually brilliant. Look at that. Oh, okay. Well, that's working exceptionally well. Now, I like my burgers well done. So how are we going to do the cheese? I don't know. Cheese is a tricky one. Oh, I know how to do it. I got it. I got it. This thing, this grill, whatever it's called, the DeLonghi multi-grill, comes with a setting. Now this is cool. Let me show you this. So on the side here, you just adjust it so it doesn't actually sit on it. Like that. So it's not actually touching the top of the burger. And you'll see all the fat, by the way, when I open the lid, is draining to here and then draining down into this tub. So I can do this and it's not touching the cheese. It's locked in place. Oh man. This, this is gonna be epic. Where are my burger buns? Gotta to toast them. Definitely gotta to toast the burgers. Now you can't see, but Bruno is loitering. He is just at my feet. He's under the, under the camera, under the tripod. He's hoping something's gonna drop on the floor. All right, so what we've got here, cheese is melted already. I think we can stop that. Okay. 140 degrees. Right, what we need to do is toast the burger buns. How do we toast the burger buns? Let's take the burgers off. Take the onions. <laughs> so happy. I'm so excited about this. All right, burger buns going on. Ooh, there's a sear mode. Let's press sear. Okay, sear mode. There you go. So I think the sear mode should get the uh, should get the burger buns just nicely toasted. And then there's a, a keep warm mode. So you can put the whole burger in there. <laughs> Let me turn you a bit, hold on. How's that? All right. And the steam has subsided. Uh, it's a bit, bit lingering, that's about it. Can you see me? Let me. There you go. I might be a bit fuzzy there, sorry. Oh, this could be... Could be the best burgers ever. Oh yeah, they're cooking. Yep. Actually, why don't I just close the lid? There we go. Toast them front to back. <laughs> so happy, I can't believe how brilliant this grill is. And I'm gonna use this in the morning for breakfast as well. It's just, oh, it's gone off. Oh, I didn't press play, idiot. 
What a twit. <laughs> All right, first time using it. It's got this temperature probe thing. Now, I bought this. This wasn't sent to me. I bought this shop. It was quite expensive, to be honest. Um, but I just figured it would be great fun to use. Uh, that makes more sense now that I've turned that on. It's sizzling. Yep. This little light is brilliant, isn't it? It's actually dark in here. But look at that. I can light this whole place up with this thing. Now my other lights are pretty good as well. But this has got a really nice glow to it. This lantern. Okay, are we there yet? Not quite. Not quite. We're getting there. I can hear it. It is toasting. Oh my gosh, come on. <laughs> and it's cold. I need the food, you know? Food warms you up. And I'm drinking cold beer. This is a uh, behemoth. Hazy IPA. <sighs> Come on, we must be there now. Still not. Oh, here we go, it's starting. All right, it was my fault because I switched it off. Idiot. Oh, come on. And, and we've got Heinz tomato ketchup and Coleman's English mustard. I'm going all in on this. All in. Uh, what we will do is, okay, they're smoking now. Oh yeah, that's toasty. Okay, so I'll take the bottom buns off. Put some ketchup on there. I should probably have done that on the burger first, but whatever. Put the burgers on. Wait, have I done this without dropping anything? Say it hasn't happened. There's probably some, yep, that's finished. Okay, thank you. Turn that off. There's probably some critic out there complaining right now. It's not a cooking show, it's going to be camping. Well, cooking great food is part of camping. A little bit of onion went on the floor, I don't want Bruno to get that. Okay, mustard. Don't let the bread burn, don't let the bread burn. Oh, look at that, perfect. Ha! Oh. Oh. oh, what have I just done? There, that one. Oh, yes. Ah, ah, that's hot. Lashings of Coleman's. Oh, oh come on. Superb. Double cheese, let me turn this light down a bit so you can see it. Double cheeseburgers with tomato ketchup, Coleman's English mustard and onions. Oh, bon appetit everybody. Bon appétit. Let me switch this thing off. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. These are huge. It kind of reminds me of that YouTube channel, Beard Meets, Meets Food.
Absolutely. Oh. Mm. <coughs> mustard. Well, oh, that was hot. Very hot mustard. I put quite a lot in there. <laughs> So glad I made two. <laughs> the multi grill. Get one of these, whatever brand you get. This is, I don't know. I'll put a link to it. I don't know where you can get it really, um, but it's DeLonghi multi grill and it's double sided. And I'm going to use that for breakfast as well. I, I don't know what power drawer it is, but it worked perfectly with the EcoFlow. Pardon me. Right, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to take my time with this one. Crack open another beer for it. Because you can't have a burger without beer. And I'll bring you back for cigar time. Hmm, look who's turned up. He's loitering. Can you see him? Probably not. He's right here. He doesn't know whether to come up or not. I'm talking and he's, he's hesitant. He's not sure. I don't know if you can see the top of his head. He's gone that way. You can't see him. Um, oh, there you go. His nose is right here. Oh, he's looking right at me. He's so cheeky, pardon me, he's so cheeky. Anyway, I'm gonna have this and bring it back for scar time. Catch you in a bit. Welcome back everybody to cigar time. Oh, that meal was epic. Bruno, are you gonna come on your bed? Come on, see how long you can stay on here, up, up. Come on, up, on your bed, lie down, lie down. Not, don't go in there, you're soaking. Lie down, come on, down, lie down, lie down, down. Good boy, 
he will not stay there. <laughs> it's just going to be, he's going to be triggered by the light. He's just going to be a nightmare. All right, what cigar are we going to have? This is another one that um, a viewer, subscriber, a fan sent me. This is a Comancho. A Comancho power band, I think it's called. And it's from, is it Dominican Republic? I think it is Dominican Republic. Um, he sent me his one month of his subscription to a cigar club that he has. You guys get the coolest subscriptions. We don't get anything like that in New Zealand. <laughs> um, let's see how this is. High hopes. Mmm, smells very good. I always carry a spare cigar with me, a Cuban. That's why I've got two in my little, my little humidor that um, Christine in Philadelphia sent me. This thing is amazing. Right. Mmm. That smells very smooth. Now, yeah, Bruno might disappear now when I start talking and smoking. He doesn't seem to care about the smoke. Uh, he just, there's just a lot to see and play, you know, do. Oh God, it's cold. I could even put his blanket on, on me. <laughs> he doesn't need it. He'll have it tonight in bed, but right now he doesn't need it. He's not cold at all. And I've got him off the ground. Love to know what you all think of this setup. Please pause and just comment because I'm looking for a tent, a setup that I can do easily, that I can use easily on the road, any conditions, uh, but on a road trip. Something that's quite quick to pack up, put away, it doesn't matter if it's a bit wet. Wow. That is smooth. That is a smooth cigar. Comancho, Dominican Republic. Mm. Yeah, that's a nice, a nice draw. So yeah, I'm looking for something that's pretty simple. This, you saw how quickly I put this pop-up tent up. And there's so much room in there, you'll see at bedtime. Two full-size mattresses. And unlike the Oz tent, where you both sort of sink together, admittedly it's, it's a one-man tent, the Oz tent. Uh, this has got two separate bits in there, so you don't sink together. Yeah, he's settled, unbelievable. I think he's worn himself out. So I can't wait to try that out. Uh, it's got a lot of unique features in there that I'm liking a lot. <laughs> this could be, this could be it. This could be the right sort of, just the right size car tent. And then it makes me wonder, well, this thing, this palace, uh, if this is the only thing that gets wet, then that's not a big deal. So it means that I could use this tent inside this and have a bone dry tent to pack away each day. Doesn't matter if the ground is a bit rocky because I'm on the stretcher. So yes, there's three items. Is it a faff to set up? Not really. That was the first time I'd done it. I didn't really see any instructions and look how quickly I set it up. This couldn't be simpler, really. This big tent, this palace. That was just a few pegs and the poles, and that's it. Is it waterproof? Well, I can see seam sealing everywhere. Nature Hike are known for pretty good quality, especially in terms of waterproofing. Um, so I would assume it's pretty good. Now is when I wish I had a fire, because it's, it's cold. This isn't smoke. 
So, cigar time. What have we got to chat about? Well, as usual, first thing to say is, um, as usual, thank you very much to everybody who has liked, uh, subscribed, and also contributed, buying us treats, um, uh, goods for you know money for treats uh, on Buy Me a Coffee. Uh, the members on Buy Me Coffee, uh, people who have bought merch. And there's Bruno, there's Bruce there, if you can see him. I've still got, I carry that everywhere. I thought it'd be nice to have him there. A lovely Brucey. If you don't know, Bruce passed away, I guess three months ago now. Um, yeah, merch. Um, did I say buy me a coffee? I did. YouTube members, uh, super thanks on YouTube comments where people have uh, contributed there. Patreon, uh, and all the presents that people send to the PO box. Thank you so much. There's so many cool gifts that I just can't go through them all. Um, I'm going to try and use one at a time on different camps, uh, but it's going to take a while. Uh, but the cigars was a fantastic one. I loved that. That was a great gift. Thank you very much. So yeah, thank you to everyone. It's awesome. And I, it's much appreciated. Um, Bruno loves getting his treats from it as well. Um, and I certainly do. <laughs> thank you for the beers. Wow, it stays cold. It's insulated pocket, beer pocket. Very good. Okay. Oh yes, and also please sign up to the mailing list. So I know uh, there's a bit of a delay or a bit of a gap between this video and the last one. I've just been busy, had lots to do. There was something wrong with the truck. Well, not really something wrong with it. It needed to be certified, which it is now uh, because of the new brakes on it. And, oh, that was the grill just falling over the pans. Um, so uh, when you sign up for the mailing list, you get notification that there's a new video out. You don't have to go keep checking wondering, asking if everything's okay, what's wrong. Um, and I do send the notification straight away to that email list. When you subscribe to this channel or you've watched videos and you're expecting to see another one, you won't always see them. Um, YouTube sort of controls how many notifications it sends out at once about one person's video. And it does, I, I hate the word throttle, it just controls it. It, 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 so you might not even see a notification or you might not even see the video in your feed two weeks, a month after it's come out. And uh, people are like, well, why didn't I see this? Well, that's, it's just the way YouTube works. It's, it's not personal, it's just how it does it. It's got millions of you know, creators or hundreds of thousands of creators and uh, it tries to even the playing field a bit. Um, so yeah, the only way to really see when I definitely, when I've sent, sent one out is uh, sign up to the mailing list. I'll put a link in the description, excuse me. And um, you just go to the website, key in your email address and that's it. I can't do it for you. You have to go on there and, and do it and sign up and you don't get spammed. It's purely just notifications uh, about new videos. Ah, oh, so what's been going on in the world? Well, I've got to say one of the biggest stories I think that's been going on uh, is the French riots, the riots in France. Now, unless you've been living in a cave, um, you'll know that uh, France is a powder keg, an absolute powder keg. It has been for a long time, and it only takes, only takes the right incident to just trigger mass carnage, looting, rioting, just crazy behavior. And, um, what triggered it was a uh, policeman shooting, you know, a young man, obviously an immigrant, um, and killing him for a road traffic incident. Now, we're seeing so much of this. And these rogue cops are giving the good cops a really bad name. And it's not fair. I know a lot of police out there, and I've met a lot of police. Uh, it was fantastic to meet all the policemen at, um, in uh, New York uh, at the um, 
at the, oh God, I'm trying to think what it's called now. The horse unit <laughs> in, in New York, in Times Square. They were all fantastic. They really were. And you could tell they really cared for the job. They loved the job, blah, blah, blah. But there's an element, a small, really small faction that have joined the police for power and to dish out harm and to shoot people. To, oh, they're itching to shoot a gun. But they don't have the guts to join the army. You know? Or they didn't pass the psych test to join the army. It's very strict. When you join the military, you have to go and have a psych test. And some of these, these police who have killed people would never have passed. So, yeah, they're giving everyone a bad name. And it's not right. Because we need to be able to rely on the police force to uh, catch criminals. Bad guys. People who burgle your house. You know, rapists. All those lot. That's what they should be focused on and they should be doing that job. You know, the amount of times we see someone's been killed over a road traffic stop. And they've done nothing right. It's just ridiculous. So yeah, that, that's crazy. And they tore France to pieces. And I don't know how France is going to get through this. Um, is Macron going to get through it? I don't know. Will he survive it? Don't know. Yeah. What else? Oh. Gosh, this took up a lot of space on the, on the news, but the uh, Titan sub that went down to see the Titanic. You know, it, part of me says, oh, just some billionaires, why are we wasting all these resources? And part of me was just inquisitive and curious, like, wow, what? This is amazing. What's happened? Blah, 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 blah. Um, but still, you know, the rich and their toys and uh, the resources that are thrown at them to find them. Whereas <laughs> a migrant crossing, 100 people die, 200 people die, kids die, and no one goes to rescue them. No one can be bothered. No one's interested. Isn't the world messed up? Anyway, I saw something now. By the time this video comes out, I don't know if it's legit or not. And maybe they'll have announced it. But I saw a transcript that claimed to be the usual communication from Titan to the base ship on the surface of the water. Uh, communicating back and forth and then first reporting the problem. That, and again, I don't know if this transcript was legit. Maybe by the time this video comes out, it will be proven legit or not legit. But some weird things and it stated there were alarms going off. They were descending way too fast from what was reported way too fast i mean ridiculous like five times the speed that they should have been descending um and then they heard uh strange noises they also lost the main power bus a and they had to switch to main power bus b and that wasn't working properly either it seemed they had lost thrust they were ascending uh when the panic started i guess and they started hearing noises coming from the rear of the sub I guess those are cavitations, which is sort of pre-implosion. Um, I guess they tried ascending and it was just so slow and then signal went. Now, I don't know if that transcript was accurate. Um, if it's the case that that was accurate and that for 10, 15 minutes or whatever it was, they were panicking and it was awful and there was a sense of impending doom, then oh, that's horrible. Yeah, I, feel, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I really feel for them. Hopefully it was the other. And the transcript isn't correct. And it just went pop and they didn't know. Didn't feel a thing. Uh, because it's over in 0.1 of a second. when Or 0.7 of a second, something like that. Uh, and they would have just spontaneously combusted with it as well. Um, you'd have to Google it. But it's not pretty when a sub implodes like that. It's over in less than a second. And everything ignites that's a hydrocarbon and you know your body is a hydrocarbon full of fat and stuff like that so that ignites as well so you, you this is why you don't find bodies of implosions because they've ignited incinerated hotter than the sun i guess uh the temperature um but what i really want to know is was that transcript accurate was it legit 
if it was legit, oh, then they they would have panicked. They would have their last few moments would have been pretty scary. Yeah, a lot of panic would have set in. So we'll see. One day it's going to come out, I'm sure. Um, oh. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg. Threads versus Twitter. Now, again, I don't know what's going to come of it. It's only Threads has only been out a couple of days. I'm not going to use it. As much as I do post some things to Facebook and Instagram, I thoroughly dislike Mark Zuckerberg and everything he stands for uh, when it comes to privacy and data and stuff like that. I don't use pe Facebook personally at all. It's just for this channel. That's it. I don't give Zuckerberg any information about me if I can help it. None. Same goes with Google. I keep it all locked up, quiet. I, I try not to divulge anything to these guys because I know they're going to sell my data. So I keep privacy switched on full. Um, threads. When you sign up for Threads, you sign up to give away everything. And you can't then close your account without closing your Instagram account. They've got you. Once you sign up for Threads, if you're an Instagram user and you rely on Instagram, once you sign up for Threads, they've got you. You've signed your life away. It's a very interesting move that Zuckerberg has done here. Is He's tricked all these people into signing up for Threads to check it out. They just blindly sign this and agree to these terms and the terms are outrageous. And then bang, he's got you because you don't want to lose your Instagram account. But you can't remove one without removing the other. You can't trust this guy, I'm telling you. You think, you think Musk is bad? Zuckerberg is awful. And from what I saw today, they're already censoring a whole ton of threads. So be really careful if you sign up for that. If you're going to sign up for it, sign up for it using a different Instagram account, not your main one, if you want to test it first. Now, I use Twitter really as a news platform. That's it. I'm not really interested in celebrity tweets and stuff like that. And I don't look at that stuff. I just use it for news, breaking news. Uh, and as a news platform, it's pretty cool. I do like it. There's a lot of news comes out on it first. Sorry, I've just blown smoke right in front of the camera. Oh, God, this lot. What next? So, I don't know if this is happening anywhere else, but in the UK, there's this mob called Just Stop Oil. They're eco-terrorists. Now, the, the reason I use the word terrorist is... Um, it's what they are. They're yobs. They're an eco-mob. And it will come down to them doing something really ridiculous soon that causes harm. But the fact that they've held up ambulances and from what i gather a couple of people have died already in the ambulance on the way to hospital then they're terrorists i'm sorry you bundle them all in they're all called just stop oil and they are determined to ruin everybody's happiness enjoyment and a break from the mundane because uh of the climate crisis and everything else uh, look I think I've said this before. I think I said this in the last video. I think I made a comment, and it seems a lot of people like that comment, which was, you do you, I'll do me. Which means just leave me alone. You, you just concentrate on yourself, but leave me alone to do me. I'll be me. So with this Just Stop Oil stuff, it's just because it's your priority at that moment in time, it doesn't mean it's everyone else's priority at that moment in time. But it also doesn't mean that they're not indifferent to it and that they don't care. But if you're trying to get to school, you're trying to get to work, you're trying to get to the hospital, a doctor's appointment, uh, you're a plumber trying to go and fix an urgent leak. This is your life. You've still got to get on with your life. And who are this lot? to say, no, 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 well, tough. That's nothing compared to the what's coming. Yes, what's coming could be bad and we all need to work on it, but not by terrorizing citizens and making their lives miserable and holding them up. That's, that's holding them to ransom. It's like, if you, yes, Blackman, if you don't get on our case with us right now, then we're just gonna make your lives miserable. We're gonna mess everything up. We're gonna ruin your sporting events. Come on, get stuffed. Soon, members of the public will take 
matters into their own hand. And there'll be nothing anyone can do about it. Because if the cops aren't going to do something about this and the government's not going to do something about it, then eventually, as proven in history, throughout history, the citizens will then deal with it. And that's when it will get ugly. So just stop oil. Just stop. Bloody idiots. Oh, here's another one I need to rant about. <laughs> uh, CBDC. Majority of people on the planet will never have heard of this CBDC. Uh, Central Bank Digitalized Currency. Not Bitcoin. Not, not a cryptocurrency. So this is basically the end goal. And it's not a conspiracy theory. They're already looking at it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm here, by the way. Um, Britain is looking at it. I think pretty much every country is looking at it. Uh, it is how to head towards a cashless society. Now, be careful what you wish for, because if you are now using, let's say, a central, a central bank digital currency that they are completely in control of electronically, and your ID is attached to that wallet, um, suddenly the government has control of your money. You no longer own your own money. You no longer have cash in your pocket. You no longer have cash under the pillow or cash in the bank that they can't touch. And I'll prove it by giving you an example of how digital currency storage has already been weaponized. And that was when Justin Trudeau uh, blocked the truckers in Canada from getting paid through uh, PayPal, GoFundMe, and any other terms, and even affected their bank accounts. So be careful what you wish for with this. It sounds kind of cool. You, people think, oh, it's just the same as using a credit card. It really isn't. It's not cash. Uh, there is no underlying cash. It's all digital. Uh, because it's digital, the government has the last say in who uses it and how. So if you go over, let's say, your social credit score in China, uh, they might say you are not allowed to buy any alcohol for the rest of the month. Or you, you, you've eaten too much meat, you can't eat any more meat. That sort of thing. Or in America, or wherever, oh, uh, you've bought your ammunition allocation, you can't buy any more ammunition. And there's nothing you can do about it, it just won't work. You won't be able to buy anything, you'll be blocked. Let's say you say something bad about the government. You slag them off. And they just want to penalize you. They could trump up anything. What if the cops can then, with a warrant, have your digital currency suspended or controlled? Where they have to approve every transaction in advance? No thanks. Give me the cash. I, for one, am not looking forward to a cashless society where it's a digital currency controlled by a central bank. Fiat money is bad enough, but at least you can draw it out of the bank and have it in your pocket. You can store it. You can store cash in a safety deposit box. You can. You can. But mainly you can spend cash on whatever you want to spend it on uh, with no one knowing and no record being kept. But once you go with this digital currency, that record is kept forever. No matter what you've ordered, no matter what you've bought, uh, that's stored somewhere on a ledger somewhere. Um, so, I mean, they're doing it to basically, so, you know, for tax avoidance, to stop people avoiding paying income tax and things like that. But it's not going to work. They'll just go to a different country or buy gold or something like that. It, it, it just, it's crazy. So yeah, not a conspiracy theory. I, don't, I just don't like the sound of it. All right, enough ranting. Uh, oh, maybe one more rant. Formula One. Um, yeah, as predicted, Max Verstappen is walking away with it. He's winning every single race. It's crazy. I'm sorry, a huge plume of smoke is coming out in front of you now. <laughs> you know, I hate wind. But the only advantage wind has is it blows the smoke away really quickly. I wonder if the top of the tent is really full of smoke. No, it's not. Hey, look, he's asleep. 
fast asleep. I could put the towel on him just to start drying him, but I know he's going to run out again and run off and go and play. So he, he, he goes in spurts, that's what he does. He just got really excited, he's got really tired and then he'll go back out again. But he is asleep and he's not cold. Formula One. Yeah, Max Verstappen is just crushing it. Well, what I should say is Red Bull are just crushing it. Adrian Newey is just crushing it. It's an interesting um, thought is that, um, is Max Verstappen gonna end up just like Sebastian Vettel? winning championships only in an Adrian Newey car. Who knows? It seems to be a curse because Vettel never won another championship after he left Red Bull and left Adrian Newey's cars. Could the same thing go for Max Verstappen? See, Lewis Hamilton has won a championship for McLaren and he's won the rest of his championships for Mercedes. So it's a bit different. And they've had different designers, whereas it's always been Adrian Newey for Red Bull, for Max Verstappen. And Adrian Newey is the best of the best of the best. He's brilliant. Yeah. So I bet Verstappen will never leave Red Bull because he knows if he does, there's a huge possibility that he'll never win another world championship again. And he wants to beat Lewis Hamilton's records. He wants to beat Michael Schumacher's records, blah, blah, blah. No matter what he says, he wants all the records. And you know he does. You know he's vain, because otherwise he wouldn't put number one on the front of his car. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, look, I blow it that way, it's, it comes across that way. Look at this smoke. Um, I don't know how to get rid of it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Doesn't matter which way I blow the smoke. Anyway, Formula One, yeah. And the races are dull, they're so boring, and... Uh, I'll say it again, please get rid of DRS, drag restraint system, it's rubbish. TV, what have I been watching? So, I started watching Silo on Apple TV. Now, I quite enjoyed it, but then it just, I can't remember any of the names. There's so many people using so many different names, and I lost track. So, the mayor has been killed, and the star is now the... the the sheriff and I've stopped watching. Is it worth watching anymore? I don't know. Someone who knows it, let me know. Is it worth watching the rest or not? Um, but the other thing that I am watching, which is excellent, is Hijack with Idris Elba. That is really good. And uh, yeah, I'm yeah glued, I'm jonesing for the next episode always for that. And then I was suddenly wondering, well, where's the next Handmaid's Tale? And where's the next morning show? These are two very good shows. They must be coming up soon. So I'm looking forward to those. There, there's, a, there's quite a lot of stuff on TV. Um, Apple seems to be getting better. Netflix, I don't know what's happened to them. They've disappeared. I, I barely watch anything on Netflix anymore. Um, have they run out of money? I don't know. Are they producing any good content? I think that they relied on The Crown so much, but the last season of The Crown was so epically bad that I think a lot of people just turned off it. Um, so... I don't know what's going on with Netflix. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, not too many rants. What do you think of this setup? Actually, there was one more thing I wanted to mention. Um, I want to end on a downer, but I just wanted to mention, so Steve Wallace, who is another YouTuber, and he's very famous camping, stealth camping YouTuber. Very well known. He's got you know, a million something subscribers. Um, his wife passed away a little while ago now. Was it a year ago? Must have been a bit less than a year ago. And obviously it devastated him, of course, as it would. I can't even imagine. I can't imagine the pain he went through. Um... Anyway, he seemed to be getting back on the horse and everything seemed to be fine. He's putting videos out and in the videos he seems fine. That's how deceiving stress and mental health issues can be. The guy is still hurting. He put out a post 
a couple of days ago saying like, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded one, I'm struggling. Uh, my grief has turned a bit into depression. And I really feel for the guy. He seems like the nicest, down-to-earth, most humble guy who, after years of struggle, had finally come good with the, the, the partner, the wife of his life, you know, of his dreams. So much love. They, they bought a, a house, you know, a, a, bunch, a block of land. They're all the future mapped out. And then she just suddenly died in the middle of the night right next to him. And he didn't even know until the morning. I can't even imagine. He didn't even get to say goodbye. Um, and his friend, what crazy neighbor has been there for him, but it's, you know, it's only so much they can do, friends. You're still the majority of the time alone, looking at the walls, struggling. And I replied to his post and I just said, look, Steve, you don't have to explain to anybody. You, you don't owe an explanation to your viewers as to why you haven't posted for a little while. Um, they just have to appreciate when you do. But it brings me to a point that, yeah, we're in front of you and we're putting ourselves out there in front of you. Um, but we have a lot going on in our lives that you guys don't see. And you don't know everything about us. You don't know everything about Bruno, about my family or anything else, just as people don't know what I'm going through, what I'm dealing with, or what people like Steve are dealing with. And it, it just, you know, you just remember that we're human beings, we're people. We are. If you bumped into us in a pub, you'd probably want to have a drink with us and we'd have a, a good laugh, even if we have completely disagree on politics or anything else. But there are people out there that sort of have demands of you because you're in front of them on TV and they think you owe them something and it's just not very nice and the fact that Steve had to explain why he hadn't been there is just one of those symptoms of, of the setup the system where um, people think that we're in a reality show when we're not we're just making YouTube videos of camping trying to provide a bit of entertainment whilst having a bit of fun ourselves and it is just entertainment so yeah Please don't take it all so seriously. Have a bit of fun with us, but also respect and remember that we're human too and we're going through the same issues that everybody else goes through. Um, just because you don't see it on our videos doesn't mean it's not happening behind the scenes. You know, Everybody's got their struggles. Um, I'm, I'm lucky in the fact that I've got a very alpha type strong personality uh, it suited me to my career, which was investment banking. I worked on a trade floor pretty much all my life. Um, and so I, I tend to deal with issues and problems pretty well. I do bottle some things up. When Bruce died, that was a huge shock, huge shock. It really caught me off guard. It really affected me. I was very, very upset for, for ages. And I was on holiday. So uh, you know, talking about it was very, very difficult. I still haven't, you know, buried his ashes. Haven't done that. That trip, we're going to do that. I'm going to do that on the tops because that's where he'd want to be. And my ankle is absolutely knackered at the moment. I've injured my ankle and it's been like that now for a couple of months. Comes and goes badly and right now it's quite bad. So I'm going to the doctor uh, to have scans on everything uh, in a week or so. It takes ages here. But anyway, so to my point, Please remember, we're all human. Um, let's show some respect, uh, some care, some empathy, some sympathy uh, for things. And uh, let's not be so harsh on comments. Uh, let's not be so judgmental. And let's not make assumptions. Because you know what they say about assumption. It's the mother of all F-ups. So don't make assumptions about anything. Hmm, just woke himself up snoring. You're right, Bruno. So yeah, please don't make assumptions. Uh, even for the simplest things, just don't assume. Don't assume anything. You, because you just don't know. Uh, the, the most common, common weird comment I get is, why didn't you put the, the door down on the tent? You'd have been warmer. And then you have to explain to people, because I'm filming for YouTube and you can't. You'd be like this. 
You've got to have the door open, or you've got to do it like this, or you've got to have the fire over there, or you've got to cook somewhere else, or you have to set up a tarp like this because you're trying to film. And when you're setting this stuff up, the first thing you're thinking of okay, is, how am I going to film this? How am I going to film it? Well, I'm going to have to do certain things. Now, if it's a cold night like tonight, majority of people would have this front door completely zip it up, and you'd be hunkered down, nice and warm, watching a movie, playing board games, whatever and you'd be fine. But I've got it wide open, so it's colder in here. It will not warm up. Uh, but because I'm filming, I've got the camera outside of the tent. It, it, otherwise, it would be right in my face. So that's why. So yeah, assumptions. Gosh, I've really segued, haven't I? <laughs> anyway, to Steve. You get through it, mate, I'm sure. And everyone is there for you and uh, you just take your time you don't need me to tell you that but just take your time and uh you don't have to explain people like you too much uh to judge all right everybody i think that's the end of cigar time um we'll talk about the tent set up actually in the morning yeah because i haven't finished it yet we don't know what's happening there's a lot of rain coming tonight in the middle of the night um so it'll be interesting to see how it holds up it's rained on and off since I've been here. Not while I've been on camera. Very light spitting while I've been on camera. So you haven't heard any rain, but it's socking wet outside. And the ground is squelchy as anything. So I will bring you back for bedtime. Cheers, everybody. Catch you at bedtime. Well, the rain is coming down quite hard now, so I'm going to get a pole and just prop this side up. So just to protect it, I put my t-shirt, another t-shirt that I've got here, on top. And this should help stop it pooling. There you go. Oh, that's way better. Plus, I've got all this head height now, headroom. Okay, that should solve the pooling problem. I mean, I've got a pole here now, but... That's much better.
Now we're camping with Tony and Bruno. Hey Bruno, come here. You gonna come in your bed? What's this? What's this? Come on. No. <laughs> Good boy. Hello. Oh, don't come in here to shake. No. All right, everyone, bring you back at bedtime. Oh, right, time to go to bed. I've got to close all this up, get Bruno onto his bed. Actually, Bruno's coming into bed with me, but for now, I'm just going to put him on his bed here. Come on, up, up, here. Yeah. yeah. Just so that I can keep an eye on him. Come on. Lie down. Come on, here. Yeah. Come on, Bruno. Good boy. Lie down. Lie down. Lie down. Go on, lie down. Good boy, stay. All right, so we'll just leave Bruno hanging on the side of his bed. Right, let's lower this. So I'll bring the lanterns in. We've got double the light in here now. I could probably leave it open all night. Uh, it would certainly help with the condensation, that's for sure. Uh, which is building, I have to say, on the inside of this tent. It's going to be a lot worse by the morning, but uh, no, I've got to close it up. Got to close it up because it's too risky, and I don't want to get up in the middle of the night and deal with it. I don't want any possums walking through here either. Okay, so it should be a simple case of unhooking this. Ugh. Whoa! <laughs> uh, it's got a bit of water that just came off there. Oops. Oh, Bruno. Got you a little bit of water on your bed. It's alright, he's not sleeping on there tonight. He's sleeping with me. Okay. So I don't think I'm going to do this all the way down. Oh, I will. Well, I tell you what, it feels a lot smaller in here when you do that. Yeah, now it's teepee, teepee style. I'll put the chair there just to give myself a bit more room. And I'll leave this vent open just a bit down there, just to circulate air. Yeah, I think that'll work. But there's still tons of room in here. <laughs> Don't forget, this is a two person tent I've got here. It is enormous. Right, so I need to get our bedding set up. Ah, that's right, so let's pump this up. Stay there, Bruno. No, no, lie down. Don't you come in here yet. Right, I need to get Bruno's towel just to get ready for him. Oh, okay, let's pump this thing up. <laughs> this is actually a big tent. There is a lot of room in here. Okay, I've got my Thermarus Neo X Therm with me this time. So while that's doing that thing, let me get the camera back. Okay, so I've got pockets at the end, 
pockets this side. Got vents each side as well, if I wanted to, with mosquito mesh. I think there's one on each side, yeah. So lots of mosquito mesh. Bruno, no, come back on your bed. Come on, on your bed, here. Here, no, no, here. Go on, up, up, go on, up. Up, Bruno, come on, up. Good boy, lie down. Oh, <laughs> it's not easy. Um, there's another door here as well. And there's a hanging hook for the light above. That's pretty much it, it's quite simple. Simple, but effective. It's got everything you need. There you go. So yeah, I've got a light up here. But you can't see. Bruno! Oh, Bruno thinks I'm not looking, so he goes and runs off. Because he wants to go back out. And he doesn't want to go to bed. All right. I'll bring you back when we settle down in bed. Ah, welcome back everybody. Well, we're all tucked in. It's cold. I'm glad I've got this. I'm in the Zen Bivy. I can't remember what this one's called, the light bed. And it's a 10 degree Fahrenheit bed. And again, you just go around, you clip it in to these wings. So it's different different to a sleeping bag you can really stretch out it's a quilt really but with these skirts on the side that stop any cold air getting in it's awesome oh, the best sleep of my life in one of these things even better than at home Bruno's all tucked in he's a bit damp I've dried him off as much as I can but as usual by the morning he will be toasty dry hey he's worn himself out he's so tired been having great fun, haven't you? There you go. So I've opened up the vents. I've got one at this end here, that triangle thing, it's a mesh, and one at that end. We're open on the top, uh, but I've got the vents on the doors closed. So if there's any breeze, it's not blowing straight up against you or Bruno, but you want your ventilation much higher. This is an awesome space. I have to say, yes, it, okay, so this is a proper two-man tent, definitely. Um, lots of space. It's vertical walls, so these walls go straight up. A lot of the tents, they come across like this, so your feet touch them or you touch them, you've got material draping on your face, but these are vertical walls at the back. Slight angle on the side, but that's it, nothing much. Uh, a few loose threads, but nothing, not too much at all. And this is just the inner. I haven't had a look at the outer, unfortunately. What I'll have to do is, if I do like being in this tent, is take this out and give it a proper test, exposing it to the conditions to see how it does. Let's just hope it doesn't leak. High hopes because this could be a game changer. I'm off the ground. I'm on this elevated bed. And we've got our own space so we're not falling on top of each other. So there's a, a ridge in the middle here. Yeah, so this wouldn't work for a two-person mattress, but two individual mattresses is perfect. And yeah, there's this ridge here. So Bruno's gonna stay on his side, I stay on my side. Even if it's on a bit of a wonk, you're pressing up against this so you won't roll off the bed. But look how much space. You've got these pockets at each end. And yeah, hanging loop at the top for a light. There's no more loops in here though up the top. That would have been nice. Just to put like a clothesline up, hang your jacket up or whatever. That's always handy. Um, but yeah, that, it's not included. So yeah, I guess you could stitch something up yourself or attach something to a toggle here. I don't know. Yeah. Um, the doors are opposite. So that one opens on this side, this one opens on that side. Perfect. Uh, the reason for that is in case there's wind blowing or rain blowing from one side or another, it just makes sense to do that. Um, so I'm assuming the outer 
is configured like that as well. Um, but actually, I think the outer is just two awnings, dual awnings. You know what? We're gonna have to. You're gonna have to watch for the next video where I actually test this with the outer on it as well. And if that's what some, if that's what a lot of you want to see, let me know in the comments that you want to see me test this tent properly with the outer on it as well. Because if we can get enough people interested in it, it's a decent tent, then maybe Nature Hike would be interested in, in distributing this via Amazon and stuff like that. But at the moment, you just can't get it. You can only get it in China, which is a real shame. Because it so far, I'm loving what I see. I love the fact it's on the stretcher. If I didn't have the stretcher, I'd want a footprint. The base material is okay, but I'd want a footprint. It's not the thickest material, but it, it's it's average. So yeah, you definitely want a footprint if you're having this on the ground. But this is designed to work on this stretcher bed, so why wouldn't you have the stretcher bed as well? You might as well. All right, everyone. Unless something drastic happens in the middle of the night, which I don't think it will, I'm not getting up for anything. Even if there's a deluge, I think this outer tent, the big palace, is fine. It's guide down, not expecting any serious wind at all, maybe some heavy rain. Um, in fact, I can hear the rain has just started. Uh, but other than that, we should be fine. All right, everyone, we'll see you in the morning. Night, Bruno. Night, night. Night, everybody. See you in the morning. Morning, Bruno. Morning. Oh. 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 Morning. <laughs> morning everybody morning Bruno oh. I heard him moving around he's been desperate for me to wake up it's still quite early though isn't it mm -hmm. thank you for my kisses oh. 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 morning it's very difficult to film Hey, eh? mm, hello. Right. Yeah, I had a comfy sleep. Very comfy. I've opened all the vents. So it's hot. Bruno is hot. Even though it's cold outside. He kicked the blanket off three times. Ah. <laughs> mm, hello. Morning. Um, yeah. Right, let's get up. Let's get coffees on. Let's let Bruno out to do his peepees. Okay. Let's go out, Bruno. Oh. Right now. Sorry, GoPro lens always fogs up. Don't know why. Oh. Oh well, Bruno's found his way out. <laughs> oh. It's chilly. It's chilly. Gonna need my jacket on. Right, quite difficult to do this, one-handed. I'll bring you back. All right, can you see me? Yeah, okay, let's get this opened up. Now, it really chucked down last night. So I just want to get as much water off this tarp as possible. Tent, I should call it. Okay. So it's just a matter of putting the pole in and we're done. Excellent. It's all good, Bruno, it's all good. Oh, it's 
wet. <sighs> Poles are cold. <laughs> oh, God, they're freezing. Oh, it's chilly. It's really chilly. <sighs> Jacket on. Right, let's take Bruno for a little bit of a walk down to the river. All right. Yeah, let's take Bruno for a bit of a walk. Look at camp now in daytime. Not too shabby. And the tent didn't leak from what I can gather. I actually put my coats on top of the, the tent here, the inner tent. But the outside tent seems to be fine. It held up really well. It was quite a lot of rain at one point. Oh, it is soaked. This is gonna take, uh, this is gonna take a while to clean up and dry out. Oh, someone is full of beans. Look at him go. Come on, Bruno, let's go for a walk. Oh. <laughs> uh, let's go look at the river. Come on. Go, 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 go. He's got a really springy run. So the river is down there. Come on. There's a couple of private spots here to camp. There's the one that I'm at there, which is tucked in behind these trees that you can actually get to just through there, a very narrow vehicle. There I am. There's another little spot here. <laughs> Come on, Bruno. Let's go to the river. And then you've got the main bit that I usually camp at. But I thought I'd try something different this time in a different spot, which is why I'm there and I actually like it less boggy. The other spot up here gets really wet, really boggy. And you're fully exposed if other cars come up. So here's the other spot. The main spot. In summer, this is heaving. But we're middle of winter now. No one around. And this is school holidays as well. It's a big space. It's toilet facilities in the back there. Extreme caution. Supervised children at all times. Wait, Bruno. <laughs> You're not a child, but you are a puppy. There's the river. It's quite low, actually. It's beautiful from here. Absolutely beautiful. In summer, you just swim in that river. You want to go down there. Bruno wants to go and have a swim. Loves his swims. So last night, that was a good camp. I, I enjoyed that. The only thing that would have made it better was having a fire. And yet there are a couple of burn marks here where people have had fires, but they are illegal. And it just, I'm just, just, I'm not into doing that just for the sake of having a fire. Uh, easier just to bring proper clothing and have lots of hot drinks, which is what I did. Uh, after I shut the camera off after cigar time, I had a couple of hot chocolates, put the blanket on. I was nice and toasty. Wasn't a problem. Right, let's go down to the river. Now, last time I held him beside myself because it was his first time, but he's been here now, so he knows where he's going. And the river isn't that high, so I don't think he can get in trouble. I'm coming, Bruno. He has that herding trait of turning around and checking what's going on. Let's go this way. It's easier. Hmm. 
He never lets me get too far out of sight. God, these rocks are like ice. Wow, it is low. It's very low. Before, all of this, the last time we were here, was covered. So it's safe for Bruno to go and jump in now. This is how far it drops. Go on then, Bruno. Go, go, go. You gonna go for a swim? He's a very, very strong swimmer. What I need to do is I need to get him a stick and he'll chase, he'll go in for the stick. Oh, perfect. Ready? <laughs> no, no, where did it go? Where did it go? So he's... He's swam in a lot of rivers now. And he's, he's just learning about currents and swimming against the tide stuff, but he's a really strong swimmer. And that is quite strong current there, quite fast. But you see it goes to shallows straight away, so we can't get in too much trouble. It sank, Bruno. Do you want me to get you another one? Let's find Bruno another stick. Something that's not going to sink. Ready? Oops, too far. He doesn't want to go for that one. Okay. Let's try one more, Bruno. I know, you cry baby. Okay, ready? I won't throw it very far this time. Go on, go get it. Where is it? Oh, they're not floating for you, are they? They're too sodden. <laughs> oh, it's desperate. All right, I'm going to play stick with him for a while. Look at this. I just love this spot. I've been here a few times. I know I was here recently, but it's because I love it so much just standing here looking at that Bruno where's your stick Bruno where's your stick Where's your stick? All right, everybody. Bring you back for coffee. Back at camp. <sighs> yeah, so the tent, the palace tent, held up very well. It's, it's a good setup. I like it. I'm impressed. And it's waterproof from what I gather, from what I've tested so far. The only thing I'm not a fan of is how this awning sets up at the front. Because these wings, when it's up, trap all the water behind, it, behind them. Yeah. So you'd have to have a couple of uh, a pole at each side, maybe. Now, the interesting thing you remember at the beginning, when I was unpacking this, there was a white cloth that comes with it, a screen. That zips onto here, to this edge, all the way along, and clamps onto the bottom of the two poles. So you've got a big white screen here for a projector. So if you're then sitting in here with the kids, looking out, you got a big projector screen right here uh, to watch massive TV on. It's kind of, you know, 
a bit odd, but if you've got a family, you've got kids, or teens or whatever, actually, you know what? Yeah, some people just want to watch it. So if you've got one of those mini projectors, you've got that set up here as a big screen and you can walk in the sides. I don't think you could use it as a wind deflector. Maybe you could, uh, but it just gives you a bit more room as well. So that's how, it's kind of funky, but that's what it's for. Right, coffee time and Bruno's breakfast. Is it your breakfast time? Let's do some magic head tilts. Bruno, Bruno, is it breakfast? Do you want your breakfast? Where's your stick? Is this your stick? Go on then, get your stick. How much can you tilt your head? Bruno, where's your stick? Is it breakfast? Is it breakfast? <laughs> he has a very strong head tilt. Okay, let's sort it out. Well, I'm glad it's not raining now because oh, it's awful when it's raining in the morning and you've got to pack up. So Bruno has a special puppy food. Uh, science diet. Sit. Sit. Go on then. Good boy. <laughs> Such a good boy. Right. Oh, no, I don't need that pole. Okay. Uh, what do I need? Coffee. Couple of coffees from the world's fastest kettle. Yep. Oh yeah, flat white. So the setup, I'm liking it. I can't tell if it's, if I'm misting up for you or not. I know it's cold and it does affect the camera sometimes. I might have to move angle because it's so bright behind me. I'm not sure if it is misting up. Okay, let me bring you back. Okay, solved it. Right. Coffee is, water is boiled. This kettle is so fast. I do get a lot of questions about this kettle and I'm afraid you can't get it in the States. I don't even think you can get it in the UK. It's by Breville. It's a one litre glass kettle and it's really fast, 2000 something watts. Excellent. So Bruno's had his breakfast. Where are you Bruno? It's got a full tummy now. He was full of beans. Hello! He was full of beans before that, weren't you? Hey, should we put your collar on? Yeah, come here. Always got to have your collar on so I can hear it jingle jangling. Good boy. There you go. You can go and play now. <laughs> oh. Actually, now I wish I was doing two nights. Like last time I wish I was doing two nights as well. The only thing is, if I was to do two nights here, I'd really want heating. It's overcast, it's cold. So yeah, I would want heating. Now, I do have, that's just arrived, a diesel heater. It's, they're designed to run it in uh, caravans and camper vans and things like that. But this is a portable unit of that. And it's got flexible hosing, ducting, and it's meant to be you know, dead quiet. So you set that up uh, outside of the tent and then just duct the heating in. And this is five and a half kilowatt heater. So that's, ex that's pretty extreme. And that would keep you warm for a long time, especially if you're carrying a lot of diesel fuel with you. which I can, no problem, in the truck. So I think next time, definitely, though I'm doing a car camp, 
I'm going to bring a diesel heater. I'm hoping now that my next camp will be a wild camp. Do it by the stream. I want to take Bruno to all our old spots with Brucey. Uh, it's Brucey. And get him used to wild camping. Because he hasn't done it yet. So he doesn't know the backpack, he doesn't know anything. Uh, Bruce would see the backpack come out and that's it. He knew straight away. And he'd lie there next to the pack waiting as I filled it. Uh, and then he'd be so excited. So I want to get that with Bruno, which I'm sure it will. He's getting used to camping now. He's, he's used to the tent already, which is great. Um, he went in there and just settled immediately, fell asleep. So, and he doesn't fidget around too much. Yeah, it's all going well. He's a quick learner. And he's, he's wandered off. All right, everyone. I think I'm going to sit back, have this coffee, and bring you back for breakfast. Hey, Bruno. Okay, welcome back everybody. Right, time to put breakfast on. So for breakfast, I'm gonna have waffles. Now this multi-grill, you can buy optional waffle pans, which are this. And they just slot in with these two things here. You can see, they're for waffles. One goes on the bottom, one goes on the top. So let's, let's do this. So you press a button on the side, it really is as simple as that. Same goes with this one. They're going to go and get washed when I get home. So the top one, you line it up. There we go. And that's in. And then the bottom one, line it up, and it just slots in. There we go, all done. <laughs> Good that. So we'll turn the waffle machine on, the grill. This is, <laughs> this is easy living, this really is. And what we'll do is we'll set it to waffle mode. Oh, it knows. Okay, so it already knows it's on waffle mode. So you've got one, two, you've got three settings. Well, I want them crispy. So you close it like that and you press play. And that will preheat and then beep when it's ready. Okay, so let's get the waffles done. My pancake mixture and my maple syrup. So usually I screw this mixture up. It's a lot easier having a big water container.
Okay. Now I can't run the waffle maker and the kettle at the same time. That's too much. One or the other. If I, if I run them at the same time, it trips the whole thing. You know, safety protection mechanism. All right. I know, Bruno, this is very exciting. What's this? What is it? It's daddy's breakfast. Yeah, it's not yours, you've had yours. What do you think, should we give Bruno a pig's ear as a treat? Yeah, probably while I'm eating, I'll give him a pig's ear. Okay, so leave that to set. Wait for this to beep. It's told me that it's, it's heated. Let's see if it's heating. Yep. And I'll bring you back when it's ready. Right, well that only actually took a minute. So they just both beeped. So let's see if I can do this. Properly. Ah, oh, now you know what you need to do is put oil on. Okay, so just a bit of oil. Unfortunately the oil is so cold, it's coming out as a big stream. Okay, let's do this. Don't overfill it. And I think I overfilled it. Okay. And then you close that. And then I guess you press... I don't know what you press. Play? Oh, that stops it. Okay. Right. Um, I guess it's on and it will beep when it's ready. Oh, timer. Okay. I see, so you set the timer. Oh, that was my mistake. All right, so let's set it for four minutes. Fingers crossed, it all works. Now what we'll do is we'll, we'll give Bruno his, his pig's ear now, because he's being such a good boy. Want a pig's ear? That's it. That's it. Go on then, good boy. I'd love to show you him eating that, but he's, he's gone quite a way off. <laughs> okay, so this is steaming away. And we're, yeah, we're filling up with steam, <laughs> but whatever, doesn't matter. Everything I cook is steaming. And then I'll immediately put the kettle on to have a coffee. So you can't see it, but Bruno is running round and round. You might see him pop out this side because he's circling with the pig's ear. But I think he's gone to find a safe spot to go and have it. I know this is riveting. But it said four minutes and I wanted to do it real time. Like, you know, what was that TV show? 24? So this is what you're looking for is this timer to go. Now I set four minutes and it's on full heat. So they should be, <laughs> I wish I could show you Bruno, but he's just, Bruno, what have you got? He, behind the camera, he's just bang, 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 bang. But as I move the camera, he'll then go to another side. Honestly, trust me, it doesn't work. But you could probably hear him running back and forth. So he's not actually chewing it, he's playing with it. Okay, we've got one and a half minutes to go. Now, interestingly, so in the other waffle iron that I use, that little one, it lifts up. So you can see it. 
it, it, it moves. This doesn't really do anything. So I can't tell what's going on in there. Maybe once it's stopped steaming so much, then I know it's dumb. I need to read the book to see what, how long you meant to put waffles on for. So, this thing, this multi-grill, if it works for me, which it has so far, it means I can do my waffles, burgers, it opens up fully flat, so this whole thing opens up flat so you can do a full grill, like, uh, you know, cook breakfast, that sort of stuff. Um, it's got a sear function for steaks. Yeah, I'm struggling to think what it can't do. It's got a warm mode to keep your food warm as well. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to use this thing. On a long trip, this would be quite handy. Not much mess. No flames. Um, you don't have to worry about gas. You just need power. That's the only problem is you've got to re keep recharging your battery banks. But if you're driving from spot to spot and you leave your battery banks plugged into the vehicle, then they will recharge. All right, now do I lift this? Let's have a look. Oh, wow. Oh, I've got to zoom in on that. Let's have a look at this. In fact, I could give them, I could give them just a little bit longer. Let's give them just a little bit longer. Sorry, the camera just cut out. I don't know why there. We'll give them a little bit longer. So I'm gonna give them another minute because I think, I think all this steam is showing that they're not quite dumb. Okay, let's wait and see. Right, so I was having all sorts of camera problems there. Okay, uh, yeah, they're dumb, they're good. Okay, let's turn that off. Let's take these bad boys out. See what we're dealing with here. Oh yes, they're definitely done. Oh, damn it, I maybe didn't need to do. Oh, they're not burnt, actually, they're just really dark. Look at that. So let's get the coffee on, kettle on. All right, and let's put the maple syrup on. <laughs> I always have waffles with my maple syrup. Okay, and there you go. Waffles drenched and dripping with maple syrup. Oh, I can't wait to tuck into these. Oh, I need to give myself more room. I've got this massive table with tons of room and I'm all scooched up. It's crazy. Coffee. Oh, these waffles smell so good. Right, bon appetit everybody. I might have to use serrated edge. Okay. Oh, they're crispy. Crispy. Mmm. <laughs> Thank you.
It's so good. This just proves. So, if you if you're in a spot where you cannot have a fire, campfire, and your only option is really gas. Okay, fine. You could use gas, and oh, it's a pain, and it gives off fumes. This is so convenient. You just need a battery bank. Okay, battery banks can be quite expensive, especially one that can power this. Um, but yeah, the EcoFlow unit I use. I mean, obviously they gave it to me but that is powerful enough so you just need something with like 2200 2400 watts capacity as in uh draw um and probably one yeah two kilowatt capacity to power something like this and you're laughing and you just need a way to recharge it i mean i've got solar panels but in winter they don't work so if i'm driving from spot to spot i'll charge it from the car Mm. Well, I'm going to enjoy my waffles. I'll bring you back for pack down.
Just walking off breakfast, trying to get Bruno's stick. He's not having any of it. He's not letting me near. Let's see if, oh, nope. What if I walk backwards? What if I run? Ah, ah. Look how pleased with himself he is. His tail's right up. Oh, he's happy. All right. I think it's time to pack up all the gear. Bring you back on the big camera. Are you not going to share your stick? Can I have your stick? Are you not going to share? You're going to make everybody dizzy. Stop. Hey, wait. Oh. oh, you're making me dizzy. <laughs> no. Okay. Bring it back, everybody, on the big camera. Right. Now, I'm going to get hot doing this. Let's take this off. Okay, start with all the bedding. So everything in the tent, then lantern, stuff like that. Kitchen stuff, table chair. Then we get rid of the tent and we're sorted. So as usual, I'll fast forward from now. Okay, everybody, right. What I want to do now is in real time, pack the tent, the tents and the stretcher down so that you can see in real time how long it takes uh, or how quick it is and how easy it is. Uh, Cause I think that'll give you some idea of how good these tents are. So let's pack down all the inner stuff first, obviously. Okay, so this is, this is the stretcher bag. And this under here is the tent bag. Okay, and you can see the inner. Excuse the outer shot. So this is the inner, uh, sorry, the outer, the fly. And the pegs and the poles to turn the fly into an awning. So all we're interested in right now is packing down the inner. So I'm gonna take these Reverse the steps, take the pins out. Actually, first of all, let's just do the doors up. I'll leave the vents open because it's always easier to close a tent with the vents open. So if you lose these pins, I guess you could just stick anything else in there that sort of matches the height 
of these things. Okay, there was a pin bag. Oh, here it is. Okay. Yeah, so these pins, if I can zoom in there, they just clip on like that and hold it in place. There you go. Okay, let's see how easy this is or isn't. Uh, where do I start? Okay, let's uh, release one at a time. There are these orange buttons that you press on each side, like so. I don't know if this is the right way to do it, but it's the way I'm doing it. So just press these orange buttons and it collapses, like so, and then there's one in the top, press that, and that collapses as well. Oh, I see. Then it folds down like that. Oh, wow, that's it. And then that folds in on itself. And this one folds in on itself as well. And that's it, done. No poles to mess around with. And then it just rolls up into the fabric. We're getting lots of our shots today. Right, that goes in the bag. Now, a bugbear of mine is when the bag is not oversized and it's tight to get everything in. This bag is oversized, which is good. Yep. I've still got to take all this stuff out. That's it, come on. That was easy. That was really easy. How much does this weigh? 10 kilos, I think, something like that. Let me tell you, it weighs, oh, it doesn't say. I don't know why you can't buy this in the States. It's crazy. It's just called an A-type automatic tent two person. I reckon this is a beta version and I'm assuming they're gonna release it with maybe modifications elsewhere, I don't know. But they should because that's awesome. That's really awesome. And it works so well with this uh, stretcher. Okay, so that's the tent done. And the stretcher, you just take the poles out that you put in. I mean, the fact that it keeps the tent off the wet, horrible, soggy ground because yeah, this would have been soaking otherwise. It would have been awful. Tent holes go in there. Oh, hang on. Have I put these in the wrong bag? I've put them all in the wrong bag. No, I haven't. This is the stretcher. A-type automatic tent. Oh no. I think I've put it all in the wrong bag. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, let's see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I just didn't remember which bag it came with. I'm sure that was the right bag, but. Okay, do you turn this inside out? No. Okay. It's just that. Hi that, Bruno. I think it's the right bag because it's the right length and it's the same material. Yeah, it's the right one. Okay. It would help if they labeled the bag. Again, nice and oversized. Zips up perfectly. But look at that. Except for saying nature hike. There's nothing on here to say what it is. On the end and on the side, I wish they would write what it is. 
But that's it, just these two things is an off floor tent. And I reckon it weighs total 30 kilos, quite heavy. But for what you get, it's brilliant. Okay, let's get this in the truck. Thank you, Bruno. Bruno's being very helpful. And as you can see, I've got my EcoFlow battery bank that I was talking about plugged in. I've got the only thing left plugged in is the Starlink. I've still got 50% power after running all of that. It's not bad. All right now, we need to get the big tent down. So this is the screen that I was talking about that maybe you couldn't see clearly last night with the big zip. And that goes uh, and attaches to the zip up there and the bottoms go around the pole uh, to give you a screen to watch movies on. Okay, I'm not a fan of them sticking these stupid brochures in everything. Now this does look like it's going to be a tight fit in this bag. Oh well. Silla V. Okay, so we've got two sets of poles. Not marked, just two sets of pole bags. Guy lines. Pegs. So I guess the first thing we've got to do is sort the front out, get the poles out, uh, then deal with all the guy lines, then pull the pegs out, uh, and then the big poles inside. So exact opposite of the way we set it up. Okay. So as I was saying, there's so much room. I'm just touching the top here with my arms up. And you can see just how far from pole to pole, which is the verticals. One, two, three. I'd say three and a half meters wide pole to pole. That's pretty big, pretty epic. All right, let's seal this bad boy up. So, so I'm going to keep the guy lines attached so I don't have to do that again. I like these pegs, very good, good job. So I need to loosen the corners so everything will zip up. Wow, so much water on here. Got to try and get as much of it off as possible. All right, let's pull out all of the other pegs and the guy lines. So that's just the small pegs that I'm taking out now. I'll tell you what's cool about this tent is it does actually stand up without being guyed out at all. 
just the corners and then you just guy out the two ends to straighten it up. This really is a one man job. You don't need two people, three people, whatever. Okay. It's got a really strong pouch for all the pegs so they don't pierce it. Hello Bruno! Bruno's got a stick. Right, let's get these poles sorted. I should have timed this. To put all of this away from the small tent to the big tent. <laughs> Maybe someone could rewind it and time it for me. Right, now we need to go in and take the poles out. The condensation in there, <laughs> it was just raining down on me. That's just because the amount of cooking I've done. Boiling the kettle, everything. In warmer months, you won't have that problem. But it's just because it's so cold. Okay, just got to unpack, unpack, roll it all up. Bruno, no, off. Oh. Bruno has no boundaries. You see it's got this reflective material on the inside. So in summer it reflects the heat from the sun.
I've got to take it out at home anyway to dry it off. Oh, I should have done this a different way because <laughs> I can't get the air out of it now. Uh, I might just stuff it in this bag and be done with it. So when you fold it up, don't do it the way I just did it. Make sure you're folding to the exit so all the air can escape. Okay, and I'll just chuck the poles in separately. Holes. Okay, that's it. Just the Starlinks pack away and I'll bring you back. Okay, ready to go home. Right, come on Bruno, let's go home. Up, up, come on. Good boy, sit. Come here, sit down. Come on, good boy. <laughs> oh, he's had a great time. All right, everybody, thanks for coming on this trip. Again, thank you to everyone who's contributed uh, financially to help us with these trips and to buy all this new gear uh, to test and uh, all the thumbs up and the likes and make sure you subscribe and sign up to the mailing list so that you know when a new video is coming out. Um, we will see you again soon. I think the next one will be a wild camp by uh, the big stream uh, that everybody seems to love and uh, it'll be Bruno's first wild camp. So it should be interesting, it could be good fun. Thanks again everyone, we'll catch you next time on AB Camping with Tony and Bruno. Say goodbye Bruno. Say goodbye. All right, bye everybody.
All right, bye everybody.